You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. My topic today is one which bored me stiff as an undergraduate student many years ago, but one that I've increasingly come to see is really important and can help us to do some interesting stuff with deep theological consequences. I hope that, despite my topic, I won't bore you. Do let me know if I have. What I want to talk about is the distinction between casuistic and apodictic formulations of legal material in the Bible. Doesn't that sound exciting? Just the words put you off. Two big, complicated words that we don't understand. Or at least I didn't before they were explained to me, and my guess is that many of you don't either. First sight, it seems like a prime example of how scholarship has lost touch with the needs of real Bible readers. But like I said, the distinction has deeply theological consequences, and I'm going to suggest to you in the next podcast in this series that Jesus seems to fulfill Old Testament law, at least in part, by rephrasing the casuistic law as apodictic. But for now, we'll need to begin with the boring stuff, and introduce what scholars mean by distinguishing casuistic from apodictic material in the laws of the Old Testament. So, what is a casuistic law? Well, casuistic comes from the Latin for a case, and quite simply it's law that deals with cases. It's basically what we think of when people say law. There's a nice example talking about oxes in Exodus chapter 21. Exodus 21 verse 28. When an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox shall be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten but the owner of the ox shall not be liable. That's nice and straightforward, isn't it? It tells you, if this happens, then this is what you do. And the way it's phrased enables you to ask supplementary questions. So you might come back and say, hey, but what if the ox has been accustomed to goring people in the past, and the owner has been warned, and hasn't done anything about it? What if it then kills a man or a woman? Well, read verse 29. Somebody obviously did ask that question. If the ox has been accustomed to gore in the past, and its owner has been warned, but has not restrained it, and it then kills a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and its owner also shall be put to death. You see, with casuistic law, with case-based law, we are allowed to ask supplementary questions. Hey, but what if? So, hey, but, but suppose... Um, the owner's been had a ransom imposed on him. Well, verse 30, in that case, then the owner shall pay whatever is imposed for the redemption of the victim's life. And verse 31 goes on to explain how much it should be if it's a boy or a girl. And verse 32 deals with the case where it might have been a slave who was gored. In which case, it's only 30 shekels you have to pay, but the ox still gets stoned. You see, with casuistic law, with case law, it's phrased as, if these circumstances, then this consequence. And it's quite all right to ask supplementary questions. What if the circumstances are slightly different like this? And the answer is, well, in that case, the consequences are slightly different like that. That's how casuistic law works. On the other hand, if we look in the chapter before at the bit about oxes, I've got a thing about oxes today, there in the Ten Commandments, in chapter 20, verse 17, we read, You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. That one's phrased differently. No, here are the circumstances. Now, here are the consequences. And it's not appropriate to ask supplementary questions about this one. This one gives us a target to aim at. The aim is to be the sort of people who don't covet any of that list of things, or indeed anything else that belongs to our neighbor. We're the kind of people who are happy with what we've got, and not always wanting what other people have got. It's a target to aim for. Casuistic law gives you a rule to obey, and gives you all sorts of consequences and circumstances, and you can look for loopholes, and you can try and plug loopholes. Apodictic law gives you a target to aim for, and it's not appropriate to ask about particular circumstances, and there is no way that with that kind of a target you can look for a loophole. 
because the question's quite simple are you aiming at that target or aren't you if you're aiming at that target good and well if you're not then sorry but it's not good enough that's the difference between casuistic law and apodictic law in a nutshell so hopefully I've got you all rearing to go and wanting to know just how that is important in the real world but for that you'll have to wait till the next podcast bye for now see you soon <laughs>